Investing in a pair of cycling shoes, whether it's your first pair or your fifth pair, isn't an easy purchase. Price, materials, fit and look all vary hugely. So here is our guide to choosing your perfect cycling shoes. Now I'll tackle the biggest question first. There are two main types of shoes you can buy, road shoes, and mountain bike shoes. Now at first glance the difference would be that a road shoe has got a smooth sole that can't be walked in whereas mountain bike shoes are designed for that purpose. They've got a grippy rubber sole but actually there's a more fundamental difference than that and that's that road shoes have three bolts there that are designed for road cleats whereas mountain bikes have two bolts that are designed for mountain bike pedals. So the shoe you buy determines the type of pedal that you can use. So decide first what type of riding you're gonna be doing. If it's a mix of road and off-road, then a mountain bike shoe is probably more versatile, but I imagine that you're here because of road shoes. A common theme in cycling shoes relates to stiffness, which refers to the flexibility of the sole. Now the theory goes that the stiffer the sole, the more power you can transfer to the pedals. And while this might be debatable from an engineering perspective, it certainly does feel like that. However, there can be a drawback, and that is that it transfers more vibration from the road back into your feet, which can lead to fatigue in less experienced riders. And also, the stiffness of the sole will mean that it'll exacerbate any problems related to poor fit if you're suffering from that. Generally, the more expensive the shoe, the stiffer the sole. Now, less expensive shoes tend to have nylon soles, then the next ones up will have carbon reinforced nylon, and then finally, a full carbon sole. Now, as well as being stiffer, carbon soles are also lighter, which is another big selling point to shoes. But fit and function are much, much more important than lightweight. Next, let's look at the material of the uppers. Now, most cycling shoes are made of a man-made material, but top of the range ones are frequently made of kangaroo leather, which is lovely stuff. It fits around your foot brilliantly and is very, very comfortable to wear. But for me though, there are two really important things to think about when choosing the uppers of your shoes, and that is ventilation and cleaning. Ventilation is much better on shoes with mesh panels, but they are harder to keep clean, so a black mesh like that is great because it doesn't show up the dirt. My personal choice is something like this, where you've got holes for ventilation and therefore it's much easier to keep clean. And generally speaking, actually, if you do ride in poor conditions a lot, then man-made fibres are actually much, much easier to care for. Natural fibres tend to be a little bit more temperamental. Closures next, and there's loads and loads of different types on the market. These Boa ones are really popular at the moment. They're quick, they're light, and they're reliable. Laces are also making a bit of a comeback, particularly on more retro-orientated shoes. Then you still can't beat the lines of Velcro and buckles. Generally, they all work brilliantly. You just have to pick which one you like the look of. So that's what's to look out for, but what about you as an individual? Well, you should pay as much attention to your cycling shoes as you would to a running shoe or a walking boot. Fit is absolutely everything. Always try them on and try them on with a cycling sock. And remember as well, you should only ever wear one pair of cycling socks. If you need more warmth, then you layer over the shoe as opposed to under the shoe. Now, when you're trying them on, of course, you pay attention to the length, but also the width and the volume of the shoe. For some people, it's going to be really important to have a wider shoe to avoid pinching, but for others, you're going to need to look for a narrower shoe to make sure that you can actually close the shoe properly. Pay close attention when you've got them on to how easily your foot will lift out of the shoe. So to try, stand on tiptoes and see if you can get your heel to move at all. A good heel cup is super important to how comfortable the shoe is gonna be and also for power transfer as well. Now, I touched on the temperature issue earlier on. Some people suffer from hot feet when they ride, so it's worth paying attention to ventilation when you're buying it. However, some hot feet situations are actually more due to a buildup of friction as a result of hours spent in the saddle. And so that is a fit issue, and so you might need to think about that, or indeed your cleat position as well. I personally have never actually suffered from hot feet when riding, despite racing in some pretty horrifically hot conditions in the past. Much more important to me is a lack of any vents in the sole. When you're using a shoe in winter and you've got vents there, they're really effective at letting in cold blasts of air. And even if you've got an overshoe on, it's still gonna make your feet cold. So, I think a solid sole like that is much, much more versatile if you're riding in temperate climates. So there you go then, a whistle-stop tour of choosing your cycling shoes. Fit and stiffness are the two main parameters, closely followed by the materials of the upper and also the closure. And don't forget looks as well. Always buy a pair of cycling shoes that you love the look of. And I think they should always be white. Really? I like the black ones. No, white. 
Fair enough. If, if you are going to buy uh, white cycling shoes, then you're definitely, definitely going to need to watch this video up here, which is how to clean your cycling shoes. And regardless of the colour, everyone needs to pay close attention to the position of your cleat. So click there to watch a video explaining exactly how to do it. And then, of course, once you've done all that, you need to subscribe to GCN by clicking on me. Mate, can I have some of those shoes? Can I, can I have one pair? Just one. They've gone. eBay. Not yet. Three day auction. <laughs> Investing in a pair of cycling shoes, whether it's your first pair or your fifth pair, isn't an easy purchase. Price, materials, fit and look all vary hugely. So here is our guide to choosing your perfect cycling shoes. Now I'll tackle the biggest question first. There are two main types of shoes you can buy. Road shoes and mountain bike shoes. Now at first glance the difference would be that a road shoe has got a smooth sole that can't be walked in whereas mountain bike shoes are designed for that purpose. They've got a grippy rubber sole but actually there's a more fundamental difference than that and that's that road shoes have three bolts.